Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to break down my process for painting metallic surfaces in watercolors. So let's go ahead and jump right in. But I will say really quickly, this original mini painting is available at my shop. And I also have a sticker of this winged scarab over there as well. It is a vinyl sticker. They are linked down in the description. There's a link right at the very top to my shop. Okay, now we can go ahead and jump in with this technique. And let's just start with talking about the breakdown of how I approach looking at and painting metallic surfaces. So there are a lot of different ways that you can get the texture in the metal surfaces. I am actually doing a little bit more of a almost dented look to it where it, it looks aged and weathered. If you wanted it to look really smooth and you can create much cleaner edges and shapes with the shadows as well as the highlights. But I went in a little bit more with like a blended textury kind of approach with each layer that I did do. But as with watercolors, which with pretty much any technique, you want to focus on doing lights first and then building up the values as you work on it rather than going shadow first and then on top of it, adding lighter colors. So I like to make sure that I get kind of the base level where most of the color of the of the metallic surface is. And I will say really quick, I definitely had reference open while I was working on this as well as the, the final pieces. So I wanted to see how light actually interacted with it so that I can make sure that I was working from a reality. But I mentally made sure that I set aside areas where there would be the highlights. That's where I left it completely white. And that's one of the things that will make it look the most metallic is that it'll shine with this really pure light. So where the highlights are, those will be white, white. Now you can mask those off. I chose to just leave that there and then paint around it, but if you're going to be doing a lot of layering around it and you want to keep those highlights really pure, then I would definitely mask it so that you wouldn't get any paint on that. And for this, I'm going with a gold color. Of course, you can do copper or silver or really any other metallic color, but this one is gold for me. And I actually really love adding warmer colors to the shadows of gold. So I add a little bit more red as I go, as well as a little bit less saturation. So the closer it is to the highlight, I usually put a little bit more saturation and brightness. And then as it gets farther away and darker, it also becomes a little bit more grayed out. And ultimately in the darkest shadows, I added just a hint of this gray color, but it actually has a hint of purple in it, which is the complement of yellow. So it has that complete polar opposite that is happening in those deepest shadows, which again is the farthest from where the highlights are wrapped around all the way onto the other side. I also did a little bit of a shadow underneath that orb and I made sure that in the inside of that shadow, I dropped in just a little bit of that golden color. So there's a little bit of reflected light where it's hitting that gold orb and then bouncing back down into the shadow and highlighting that again. And that's one of the really fun things about metallic surfaces is that you can get really complex with the way that the light is interacting with it and how different colors are reflecting into the surface, but you can definitely make things more complex or more simplified in the way that you break down the shapes. Okay, so when I'm working on an actual painting that's metallic, so say a different shaped object than just a straight sphere, I'm really thinking through how each plane, each section is shaped as well as, and probably the most important part is where is the lighting coming from? That completely changes the way that you paint and highlight and put into shadow that object that you have. So for this, this winged scarab that I'm doing, I imagine the sun or the, <laughs> the light to be kind of where my head would be looking down at the piece and then a little bit to the left. So, so the right side of the scarab would be a little bit more in shadow and the highlights would be farther to the left. And then on the like left half of the scarab, the highlights would be a little bit more directly coming down onto the object, if that makes sense. I also try to make sure that as I was bringing over the sketch in with the pencils, that I was making sure that I got really distinct shapes that I was breaking it down, 3D shapes, if that makes sense. So I wasn't letting anything become too flat or too abstract in the way that I was displaying it. I wanted it to have mass and shape and look like it was receding into the distance. That way I could make sure that I was really building it in a way that I could see where the shadow should be and easily apply it. Now that's the one thing that with, with this, with the way that I was working, I had different references of how 
metallic objects would reflect the light, but I didn't have an exact replica of this scarab that I drew. So I had to use a little bit of, of a mixture of imagination combined with the reference photos that I was using to decide where certain things would be happening. And that also came into play a little bit with, again, the texturing that I did. I, I think looking back, it would have maybe preferred if I had executed this with a little bit smoother edges so that it would look like one smooth scarab. But the application that I ended up having is I gave it a little bit more of this pitted textured look where when there's a shadow, I broke off into these little dots as they, they feathered into more highlighted layered areas. And the reason that that makes it look a little bit more textured is again, it makes it look like those little points are receding into the distance more that that's where the shadows are, are making that object look farther away and the light isn't quite making it down in there. So, so that is one of the cool things you can really push how weathered an object is or how brand new it is. And for this one, this technique, I ended up going a little bit more on the antique side rather than the new side. And there was one small thing that I kind of had to course correct as I was working on this piece, but I used a red cold erase pencil to do like the refined drawing line work phase. And it always looks really good when I transfer it right over onto white paper, but I always forget how, how light the value of that red is. So if I do very much shadow or value at all in a piece, that line work pretty much disappears. And I really love having a hint of line work there. So after I started getting the darker shadows in the gold, I did have to go back in there with, I actually went in with a black pencil to strengthen some of those areas. And I also used it very lightly to add a bit more deeper shadows, especially on the wings where there are different feathers to give those those little like edges where there's two feathers converging on top of another one. I gave that section just a little bit deeper, darker shadow. But I think that actually worked really well because once I added that really soft shadow there, it actually matched some of the texture that I had in the watercolor elsewhere where it was a lighter value. So it did still play into things that I had already put down. And one of the really fun things to do with metallic objects is to show light and colors that are reflecting off of other objects that are near it. I actually didn't do it in this piece at all. I kind of wish that I had though, but what you can do is just look for really brightly colored objects or really anything that's close by to that metallic shape and then bring that color in and just drop it in there before you add any of the yellow localized gold color. So say if you had something that was really rich red next to this gold, you could go in and have a whole shape of a reflected red right into that gold area. And it, it really does create a lot of life to the piece and connection with, with the other shapes that you have so that everything isn't so separated. It also is a lot more realistic. So it's a, it's a really fun thing to look for ways that you can include it. And I really wish that I'd put it in this piece because I, I love looking for ways to to make it feel like there's something more going on. Even with this, where the shape is, this scarab is just on a white background. If I had gone in with a really strong reflected color and done it correctly, then it could have looked like, like it would fool the eye into thinking that there was a room in front of it or these other imaginary shapes, but shapes that would have been near this thing. So, so there are a lot of ways that you can use that kind of technique to tell more of a story and to provide more information. But don't forget to check out the listing for this little mini painting over at my shop, as well as for the vinyl stickers. I'm really excited about those stickers. And if you didn't hear on my last video, I am dedicating about a month to focus on one theme that I find really inspirational and that is ancient Egyptian mythology. So that's why for the next little couple of videos I think I'll be I'll be exploring that and exploring the different gods and goddesses and different icons so if you'd like to see a specific god or goddess or something very specific to Egyptian culture I would love to hear it down in the description but but that's it for today I will be back on Saturday with another video so thank you so much and I'll see you then.